world of science, the world of the world, the world, the world, the world, the world, the world of science. The Dr. Hans Burger. Dr. Hans Burger is a board certified, world renowned surgeon specializing in physiology, histology, pathology, pharmacology, anatomy, psychology, microbiology, biochemistry, pediatrics, family practice, and internal medicine. Dr. Berger obtained his medical degree from the University of Medicine in Dusseldorf and in 1996 began his postgraduate training at the University of Wisconsin, where then he did his fellowships at the Hospital of Potential Saints at Cliburn, Texas. Dr. Berger has written several articles and books as well as toured the country with sold-out speaking engagements. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the world of science. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World of Science. I am your host, Genevieve Holcomb Marcellus. I am here tonight with internationally renowned, brilliant scientist and physician, Dr. Hans Berger. Dr. Berger, it's an honor to have you here with us in the World of Science. Well, thank you, thank you. I hope that the World of Science can bring some joy to some people as well as a good amount of knowledge as it did me. Dr. Berger, so many are curious, how did you become involved in medicine? Well, it's an interesting story. When my, when my grandfather was in the World War II, uh, he showed me these pictures. As he got older, he showed me all, uh, he was a medic and he showed me these bodies with, with all these um, dismemberments, amputations, and it really, it really struck a chord, as Americans say, that I wanted to study science, I wanted to help people people who, who got dismembered or amputated, you know, basically who had no better life than they had before. I see, yes. And have you found that here in the States as opposed to Germany, where you're from? That's another good question. The, the people in Germany have a much happier life than most of these Americans do. Probably the reason their food is just weighing them down. I have to say that healthcare is healthcare all over the world. Yes, Dr. Berger, what do you think is needed to improve the healthcare industry of the United States. Perhaps people uh, should study with licenses that are valid. That would be a good start. Sure. I think what the people need is help. Uh, many decisions are made uh, based on monetary and uh, legalities as opposed to actually helping people with their problems. Sure. What would be one thing off the top of your head you would like to change, if you could, for the better? Well, we've got many sexually transmitted diseases far superior than over there in Germany. I'd like to see some more antibiotics, uh, some more education on safe sex protection. Perhaps maybe more male nurses in labor and delivery. Right? They could really help out. So what do you prefer in the realm of medicine? Do you prefer pediatrics? You've also worked as a surgeon, as an OBGYN. What is your preference yeah. in the field of medicine? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I've generally, as you said, I've generally covered lots of disciplines throughout my career. Uh huh. I would have to say that trauma, trauma surgery, where I get to play God for a little while, is probably one of my favorites. I like, uh, I like the blood and the cutting, and uh, like to snap the bone several times. And what do you say to comfort your patients that are going through these very, very grueling traumas? Oh, I, I used an example. There was this sure. one lady. Poor lady fell down, broke her pelvis. She was in agony, agony, agony. And I told her, look, I have a little shot of whiskey. I will order it. You'll be fine. It was in the blood. No blood clots. No pulmonary embolism. Just how she'll be fine with the whiskey. And was she fine with the whiskey? Oh, she was great. She slept for at least six hours. The nurse thanked me. She said, uh, she asked me if it was possible if uh, a shot of what they say, wild turkey two six hours so i said nine that is not part of medicine only something to shut her up oh i see sure sure what other traumas have you experienced that you'd like to share with us ah well there was a trauma one poor child 13 years old fell down and broke his noggin 
Ugh, poor child, he was all over the place in the bed. Parents didn't want me tying him down, but they didn't realize that if this little punim fell out of bed, he would have been far more fucked than any any other moment that he was. But um, it was it was a whole different ordeal with the children and the adults. Uh, not many that I want to talk about. No, just that one stuck out in my head because he had the cracked head. So, Dr. Berger, um, so many of our listeners are health conscious or trying to become so. And a lot of that health consciousness is directed towards healthy eating. Now, you also, having been board certified in nutrition and metabolism, was it? Uh, yeah. Nutrition yeah. and uh, the study of metabolism, yes. What are some healthy eating tips you can give our listeners? Well, put down the bonbons and the ice cream and perhaps you should grab yourself some frozen yogurt some fruit. Uh, I've noticed there's a lot of what they call this sprinkles here on ice cream with the chocolate and the candy coated candies and the caramel. No, put that aside. Perhaps you should sprinkle some spinach or, you know, some strawberry shreds on top of your ice cream. That would be good. People just need to put down the grease. And there's a lot of shiny food here in America. I, I brush my hair and my pizza every day. It's amazing. And then the fries and uh, the waffles, pizza. It's, it's amazing. I suggest put it to the side, grab some green vegetables and call it a day. I see. So you're, you're saying we should sp- Sprinkle spinach on the ice cream and stay away from shiny foods. Perhaps. I went a little too far with sprinkling the spinach, but it was the first thing that popped into my head. No, I think that's very interesting. I I really do like that. They can get their beta carotene along with the enzymes needed. Absolutely. Huffage is good. Huffage is good for the body. Makes you poo. Helps you clean you out. As opposed to all this grease that stuffs you up and makes you fat. Do you have... Any kind of recommendation for food preparation? You said grease, so I assume uh, no fried foods, or do you recommend stir fry? Uh, Help us out. Oh, okay. What I recommend is baking. And please wash your hands before you touch the food. I know many people go pee pee poo poo before they cook the food, but please wash your hands. I cannot stress it enough. I don't want the E. coli in my food. But the food that we all should select, it should be baked. If you're going to cook food, baked is good. Of course, rice you can't bake. A lot of other things you can't bake, but baking chicken is much better for you than frying. Baking fish, things like that. That's that's just my suggestion. Uh, Dr. Berger, there's been a controversy regarding charbroiling food, which is sort of, it's a roasting, but it's still a baking. You know, you don't add, you know, fats unless you're doing, say, like a buttered squash, if you will. How do you feel about char broiling versus propane cooking when it comes to grilling food? Uh, well, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, Miss Marcellus. Uh, the char boiled, I, I'm not too familiar with the char. Tell me about what, what's, what's the char? How um, do you do the char? Here, here in the States, we grill food by lighting charcoal briquettes. And they glow, and the glow and the heat uh, yeah, yeah, generates yeah, yeah, yeah. and cooks the food, as opposed to a propane gas, which is just like cooking with a gas stove only. Um, I see. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Well, perhaps then what I would say, I would definitely recommend the, 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 the char- charcoal, char- charcoal bri- briquettes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh-huh. I would definitely recommend that as opposed to the propane gas that's uh, emanating profusely through the fire into your food, Simply because there's a higher possibility that propane will stick into your food. You'll eat the propane. Propane goes to your body, comes through the rectal passage and burns. I don't recommend the propane at all. What about the uh, argument that perhaps the, the smoke from the charbroil, which gives the food such robust and beautiful flavor, also may be a predicate to what you said to the propane? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, secondhand smoke is one of the leading causes of the lung cancer. Uh, when you're smoking your food, I would suggest keeping non-smokers away from the smoke so that they won't get caught in uh, 
well, how you say that? Oh, the word escapes me. But definitely, lung cancer is something you want to kind of focus on when you're cooking over the bichet. This is lots of smoke. Yeah, smoke, smoke inhalation, not good. Nine, 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 um, that's nine good. Dr. Berger, that, that also brings us to another topping of smoking. Do you believe that secondhand smoke from cigarette and cigars is killing a third of the lung cancer patients of America, as some studies have stated, or do you think that that's an oversight? I will nine. I think clearly some of these physicians are killing these lung cancer patients because they have no idea what they are doing with his lung cancer they say oh you're terminal you want to die all they need is a little love and encouragement and you know some family time dr berger what do you think if we can make a change in ourselves be it with eating habits or exercise or communicating with family you also have a degree in psychology i understand from the um Correct me if I'm wrong. The University of Wunderbult. Wunderbult, yeah. Wunderbult, yes. Um, is that an online institution, Doctor? Oh, Robert? nine, nine. nine? Not, it's, it's not actual, when I okay. went. Oh no, you had to show up. Oh, you had to show up. I see. Sure. Um, what would you just give our our listeners that are so you know hungry for any advice that you can give with your renowned intelligence? What are just some healthy living tips you could give us? Masturbation is okay. Love yourself. Sex helps you live better. It helps you live longer. Do not listen to angry people because angry people don't get sex. Touch yourself. It's okay. Love is good. That's what I would suggest. If you can't do anything else, just love yourself. And so, Dr. Berger, why did we're so glad to have you in the States? You've helped yes. thousands upon thank thousands you, of you. people. What was your motivation to cross over from Europe into the United States? I would have to say that there was the party scene was just getting too overwhelming with the leather and the candle wax. And I wanted to come to America with, where, where America was much, much more conservative, much more calm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't such a hippity hop lifestyle uh, as the Germans. That that's what one of the main crossovers that American healthcare needed a lot of help. Sure. In my opinion, compared to Europe and other countries that have a kind of healthcare that it seems to be much smoother, much much more steady than the American. That is great. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be right back with Dr. Hans Berger mm. in the world of science. Mm, thank you, yes. <laughs> 